everyone. We have a record crowd here tonight uh, due to our very famous cele uh, celebrity speaker who's brought bishops and politicians and all sorts of people here tonight, which is great. Uh, and you're all very welcome. I'm not going to give any introduction to Larry because you all know Larry. Um, and Larry is uh, the founding member, or one of the founding members of the Claire Root Society. So I think that says it all, um, particularly with the crowd we have here tonight. I just want to make um, one quick announcement there. We had two, um, two members of the society that have passed away there very recently. Um, you might have remembered Roger O'Donoghue from the Clare Road, who was a member from the very beginning. I know it didn't work for me, but it works now, okay. Um, and Patricia Roach McInerney um, from Kilkishan. Uh, I don't know if any of you know her. I knew her myself anyway. They, they passed away very um, within the last month, so uh, we do send our sympathies and condolences to those families. Um, anyway, I'm going to uh, hand over to Larry, who's going to talk about the laneways and the bowways of Ennis. Thank you. Uh, Bishop Willie, uh, thanks for, for everyone for turning up. This is the most dangerous talk anyone could ever do in the town of Venice because I see so many experts in the room and I know I'll be torn asunder at the end of this talk but I'm going to chance it anyway. The background to it, I suppose, in 2014, um, uh, Tom Hogan used to do People of the Year, as you recall. And I used to be the rollout geek uh, for the start off of the night, and I used to have to do talks on the hidden history of Innes, the houses of Innes, etc., etc. But in 2014, I did a talk on the layers and bowers of Innes, about 15 or 20 minutes. But the main purpose was keep talking, keep them amused, and you'll get away with it. That was the brief. Now, tonight is slightly different. As you can imagine, we have, as I spoke to Michael Hoolan early on, he agreed with me this was a brave talk to take on and when you have a solicitor saying that to you you know you're in deep trouble <laughs> okay so we we'll start that way i have the problem is i don't know how far i'm going to get and i'm going to i'm watching the clock that's steph did because people have asked me to watch the clock so i keep going as long as i can and i stopped in okay um this is taken from a movie um there's two movies done on innis and they're freely available on youtube the first one is Gallagher's history. He walked through the town of Innes way back as a, an educational program in Innes. And he did two half hour sessions. And he went through the town and gave us the history of the town in he, at, at that time. The second one then was uh, Patty News. They did an Innes thing as well. And they came through Innes. And the big thing was this car. And it was clogging up the streets of Innes. And it eventually ended up outside the Old Round Hotel, where uh, the, the manager or the owner at that stage appeared outside of the door. Okay, sorry, I think I'm right now. That's tonight I'm doing it in remembrance of my daughter. As you know, Laura passed over in December 2019, last year. Um, parking, Laura's thing was, as you know, the HPV vaccine. Uh, my little contribution and the family's contribution to that is we continue the, the advocacy. So it would be wrong of me not to mention her tonight and simply say uh, the vaccine has come back into the schools in March and we'd appreciate those grannies and grandfathers just to make people aware of the vaccine and, you know, get the facts. That's what she used to say, get the facts. The other thing about Laura's uh, <coughs> in this thing tonight is the documentary. <laughs> and everything that was done on Laura. The value of records, I can't stress them. He saw it in her, in her video, or her documentaries up again uh, next week, Thursday night at 10 o'clock, or he already running it. But the value of records came out very strongly in Laura's documentary. You saw it with videos, the small video clips that we used to do when we were going on holidays uh, 20 years ago, uh, photographs, etc. Uh, school records, uh, detention slips, all that stuff. The value of that stuff is unbelievable. If you do not believe in genealogy, believe in a box. And what I say by a box is have a box somewhere in the house and throw all that rubbish that you consider rubbish into the box and let the next generation look after it. But leave them something behind. Okay? Um, this is uh, Clan Road, over near Dermot Mary's house, uh, Clan Road Bridge. 
uh, this is a, a sketch of it that was done in 1681. In it started out in Clon Road, we are told. But I, the oldest part of Innes goes back to the 10th and 11th century, which is Drumcliff. Okay? But everyone starts in Innes over here at uh, O'Brien's Castle. So O'Brien's were in town. They were they invited the friars, uh, Toman Castle. We're looking at 1210, 1215, roughly, when the O'Brien's came to town. And they invited the friars in. I've just picked through some listing. So Innes Abbey, which we are now wrong, Innes people here all round now. You do not call it Innes Abbey no more, it's Innes Friary. The historians will tell you that uh, it's no longer Innes Abbey, it's Innes Friary. I've been corrected a few times. But for Innes people, we were brought up. The Friary was in one place and the Abbey was in the other place. Forget about it. The, the Friary now is below there. So in, uh, in 1240, we had 60, 600 students and 300 monks. So that in itself uh, led to commerce. So basically you had to feed them, clothe them, etc. So the town grew up around the abbey. Now this is an aerial view around 1970. Um, I'll turn this thing now. There's Abbey Street, there's the monument, and I have better ones than this coming later on. But basically, that's an old area view of Venice. Okay, I'd be wrong not to mention this man. Some of you will know this man. And those of us who are ordinary four by twos when it comes to local history would have to acknowledge this man, uh, Jerry O'Connor. Okay, he was married to uh, it should be uh, Sheila Hayes. Okay, so he, she was in in three generations. But Jerry was one of the first ones that would have lured a lot of us into local history because he, in the Clare Champion every week, he, he had a non diploma of the Clare Man and he used, it was all local history. Um, we all love to find something that no one else found. Unfortunately, Jerry was staked when something was found, and I'll come to that now in a minute. Um, sorry, but we need to go back there. This is a, a map that. Rena Dalek put together in volume, the other clear, volume 41, 2017. He considers it medieval Ennis. He added a new emphasis to the town in the sense that he identified three uh, tower, or tower houses as you come in, three entry to the town of Ennis. One was below the Friary or over as you come over to the Causa. The first roadway in Ennis was the Causa from the castle or beyond over to the friary, okay? So that was the first road went to Innes. It was a marshy area, so a causeway is a raised area. So the roadway was a raised area, okay? So that's the first entry to town. The second entry was above the county jail, which is outside the, 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 the O'Connor Street here, outside the town hall. The third entry was below in Stackpool's house, which is uh, below in Angel's shop in Parnell Street. So that's how small the town was. If you didn't get in by the, the Connor Street entry, you had to go over the laneways, back down along, because all this was marshy land, and you had to come back in Parnell Street. Okay? So this was a new addition to our thinking on the town of Ennis. Thanks to Brian O'Dolic. Ennis was raised to the ground in 1590, some say, but more say uh, 1599. Okay, so basically you had the old Innes which went from 1240 up to 1600. It was raised to the ground means it was demolished. Okay, uh, the, the, they came down from Ter Connell, um, uh, I have his name there, but he act, uh, got rid of the whole town. Basically, he, it wasn't bombs or anything like that, he set fire to the town. So the town was burned out. So that was the first end of Innes. That said, uh, around 12, we still have a problem with one house in Innes. That's McFarren's on Parnell Street. You know the laneway until much McConnell, not to Chapel Lane. The, the house at the corner there, uh, historically, when the gable fell and sort of rebuilt the gable, uh, they found that it was back to an old timber frame house. So it actually goes back further than 1600. So, <coughs> you know, that's the only real place that's left. The only other thing that we can trace back to 1600 spot on was the three Jacobean chimneys that we have in town. You all know two, do you know what they said the third one is? The first one is 
as you look up at the, the hairdresser, uh, Sean Springs place, over his roof. The second one is McParland's below, and the third one? No, Morris, the side of Morris Lane, and Cook's Lane. If you look up and see the shape of the chimney, it has been plastered. So the same chimney, the Jacobean chimney, is up in Morris, or not Morris Lane, Cook's Lane to be precise. But at the corner of that lane is the third Jacobean chimney. This is a picture or a map of Innes in 1703. It's grand and simple. Sorry, I'll go back a bit. Uh, we have the friary down here. And you come up along to the top of Connor Street, the old courthouse. Down Parnell Street, or High Street stroke Parnell Street, <coughs> and down O'Connor Street. Okay, and here's the entry again. Do you remember I was telling you about an entry into the town? So we had three entries, one there, we presume down there, is down near Inzers below, and the other one below at the Friary. Okay, uh, we can date the town by three plaques. One is the top one, it's the one, sorry, go back again. Uh, that one, Cruz's house above the Queen's Hotel. There's a plaque up on that that says, the following historical plaques were erected in Abbey Street. This house was built in the year of our Lord, 1658. So remember we were destroyed in 1600. So the town started to take shape after that again to be rebuilt. So Cruz's house is 1658. The second one is the famous one that I said early on about um, here's a shop. Here's a shop uh, after uh, Jerry Connell passed over, he sold on the property and it was being demolished. And lo and behold, behind the plaster was this plaque of uh, James McNamara, who's actually buried, McNamara, he's buried below in, 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 in his friary, <laughs> okay, uh, built this house in O'Donnelly, 1661. So we've gone from 1658 below to 1661. And then the final plaque then is below in Parnell Street, which gives us a date of 1687. Okay, so there are the three dates that are important to see that, how the town evolved. It's in George Stackpool's. That plaque is sitting above in uh, Dyser Dodi Castle above the top floor. I've tried to get it back. I did my best, but I failed. Okay, with the three plaques would be at the, uh, the town. This is what we were working off originally in 1841 map, very hard to follow. Then uh, the other clear starts working laneways and bowways, and in one of the volumes they started putting uh, in the laneways, but they basically go back to the Griffiths valuation of 1855 to establish the laneways. Then lo and behold, Green O'Dolly comes on stream again, and he gives us the Innes Atlas. A magnificent document, 30 euros available in Innes bookshop. But the Atlas contains a map, and it blows up the 1840, and it puts all the laneways in, and it puts in basically the houses in the streetscape, but it gives us a more a pleasing view of things. No. Sorry. We have, sorry, we have other maps as well in around 1900, that uh, ordnance survey maps that shows the laneways, and the show, sorry, and it shows the number of houses that are on the laneways. So the 19, oh, the, the, the 19, I think it was a 1911 map and a 1907 map, which you basically get the lane was in that. They all seem to fall back to the Griffiths valuation with regard to the lane was. So they basically say the valuation lists, 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 lists. Sorry about this now, I'm only getting used to this. Okay, it basically says the 30, 30, 30. Okay, the valuation is 37 lanes in Ennis. Okay, how many have I found? I found the names of 90 lanes plus, and I found two today. <laughs> okay, so this is how unusual this thing is and how dangerous this thing is. But basically, the, the 1855 valuation takes in all the laneways that existed at that time. Okay, I'm not going to list them for you. Added to that, from 1855, up to, up to, up to, up to, up to, I know what I'm looking for now, yeah. We can, the, the, every time a property changed hands, we have what we call the cancellation books. And we have uh, collected the cancellation books for all the lameways in Innes. So they, they do them roughly every 10 years or every five years. 
So we go from 1856 up to 1970. So we can trace people in these houses up there. They'll be on the back of the book that I have done. Now this is really thanks to Jerry Woods, who pains me, went through all the cancellation books for me and put them into chart form. So we, we will have all that done. While I'm here now, just to give you further records, where do I get the records? With the cancellation books, uh, we have something else here again now, and you all have played with this, like, uh, what's this, occupation and residence in the lane with the census. The people that lived in the lane was in 1911. What did they do? We had laborers 32, tailors 9, butchers 6, bootmakers 5, car drivers 1, shoemakers 5. So we have the trades and we've abstracted them out of the census returns, okay? So you can see they're all working class people. Um, the census itself, people automatically go to the census and they look for their family and they get the names of the family and they get who's in the house. But there's also another sheet on the census which shows you how the house it was, what, how many rooms were in it. Uh, uh, was it attached, was it stone, or was there, were the walls stone, or were they made of mud, or what the hell were they made of? Was it a second class, first, second or third class house? A third class house is a poor class house. Okay, so if we look at this one, where have I for, I'm trying to follow John Cliff, the islands, like Brady's Lake. We had second class and third class houses, which isn't too bad. I'll show you a few houses in a minute. Okay, you've all seen this thing, this is taken from the Lawrence collection. Photographs are very important to us. So the photograph here is of, we'll, we'll, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll do two lanes here, or three lanes. That man, we think, or he was identified to me at one stage as Paddy Kennedy's, the late Paddy Kennedy's grandfather. Okay? Standing there. He used to have the, the funeral home, or, the, or has the funeral home. This one is in Wright's Lane. He called it Congress's Lane, the bunch of Okay? But that's in Wright's Lane. Jimmy Inwright, you recall Jimmy Inwright had a shop in O'Connor Street? That would be Jimmy's grandfather that was in that lane where he had a massive complex in there. I'll come to it later on. That's Fatty's Lane down there, and usually across the road is River Lane. Okay, I'll bring another one. You know that one? Chapter yeah. Lane. And who lives in that house? Who used to live in that house? Diver. Diver Mac. Okay, he appears in that film that your man did. He looking out, and he claims in the oak that he's there for three generations. And he tells us all about music, and he was a member of the band. Okay, here's where the community centre is now. Here's the old church. I'm not getting down about down Chapel Lane for a minute. That one. No, Brewery's Lane. Man, Oliver, you should be up here from now. Okay, that's Brewery's Lane. Brewery's Lane is uh, what you call? Oh, don't say that. Uh, bro, uh, the the pub above it's a square. Uh, Daniel Collins that was and now is Daniel Collins. Yeah. Go down to the end of Dan Daniel Collins. I'll be showing you the lane. Daniel Collins, the first bit as you go down Daniel Collins <coughs> is Brewery Lane. It's not Brewery Lane. Uh, Brewery Lane is further down, down at the river. I'll show you the breakdown of that later on. But that's onto the river. If you go down to the very end, you can imagine the inner flood. And we have flood relief now. Make sure the water came straight up. So when you lived in the lane was you were flooded. Okay? <coughs> They're on the killer. Over in the market, near Conan's house, and where the new uh, structure of the, the market is. Okay? Uh, that's an old one of us, and I came across this one thanks to Gislin the Rake. Uh, she sent me on this one when I was doing the history of Garan the Killer. I did a small booklet on Garan the Killer. Garan the Killer is the old graveyard in Innes. It was there up to eight, 1832 when cholera broke out in Innes. They had to get rid of the burials out of Innes, so they went back up to Drumcliff. So from 1832, all burials took place. More, the, more the bulk of them are put in Drumcliff. Okay, so the famous date on that one for burials, 1832. You know that place? It's the market. It's the market. It's the market. It's the market. That, um, make, sorry, um, sorry, go back. Go back, go back. This thing has a life of its own. Here. Um, the cannon used to be here in that place. That was the, the shambles. It was identified as the shambles. 
Now the shambles was a meat cut near here originally. The brass band used to play there, the trade union band. Uh, in this, there's better pictures of that there. That laneway was, do you know that? Summer Hill. But what laneway was it? Pinnacle. Pinnacle Lane. Okay. So, so that's that one. Okay. And Tristan has gone wrong. We have to be very thankful to this man, Captain Morgan. The poor devil, he, was, he died taking the last photographs of County Hotel when he collapsed. He was in a rush back to Dublin with the photographs and he forgot to close the door below in Shannon. So he went down in the estuary, Captain Morgan did. But he left us what I thought was one photograph, this photograph, which is Hermitage up there. It was just constructed Hermitage. The date of these photographs I'm uh, alerting you to is January the 4th, 1952. That often comes up on Facebook to say when was the photograph taken. But the modern photographs were taken on the 4th of January 1952. I got that from Ireland from the air. There's a book written with all these photographs in it. I have the, that photograph over there it, near Jane, where she's fallen asleep me, over there. <laughs> Okay, so that's Captain Morgan, and I can't stress the importance of him. These are some of these photographs. The quality you can blow them up to the degree. Do you see Abbey Street car park there? That's, there's all car park there now, but that was the old, uh, uh, your man's forge, yeah, etc. I'll be showing better photographs of this later on. And there's Parnell Street car park. You can see that, full of houses going down to the river. It needs to say the water came up and flooded. That kept now, here's a photograph or a painting. We're trying to get done in conjunction with the Inner Tidy Towns. Um, it's a glow, it's a, an enlargement of Captain Morgan's photographs. We put a couple of them together and we have it in colour. It, it's better than that now. I, I don't know why that's coming, maybe it's in that. But you have the, the Binder Street over there, you have the convent in around here, okay, the cathedral there. We're getting them to change that, we're not happy with that. So we're working within us tidy towns. This will turn into a poster. You go to the schools, as far as I know, Mary, am I right? You're talking about going to the schools with this thing. So we're trying to get this thing as near right as we can and trying to bring it back to 1900 so the kids will see how the in the school. Okay, well we're thankful to us tidy towns for, uh, for this effort with us. The ensuite in most houses in the lane was. <laughs> okay? You can't be the joy. You were lost in a laneway house if you hadn't the joy. Because what could you do? You had to use it and you had to come outside the door and let it off in the drain. You needed water, so you had to go to the well for the pump. Yeah, some of you will recall the turnpike photographs. I have some of them here. But the most important thing was water. So you had to go to the pump. Now, the light is the tinny lamp. I'm trying to bring you back a bit. You know this girl, she appeared in Facebook there recently. And I, I put this in because uh, we're binge watching, myself and my good wife is binge watching at the moment, uh, called the midwife. Okay, so this lady was a very important, like, uh, she's nurse dogging. Okay, and people, when there was a child being born, not called nurse dogging. But she, there was a couple of them in Innes, but I, I wanted to put her in intentionally because she appeared in the book on St. Michael's, Cora Hesse's book on St. Michael's. So I, Okay, when I started this and I showed this in the parish, there was 45 lanes like the other one, but like I told you, we're over 90 now, so the list is gone. Okay, Pound Lane, you know where this is? <coughs> There's no one of them McInerney's. And uh, Foodie and Daughter is up there. You know Pat Foodie and Daughter? So, you can see, if you look closely at the wall, you'll see the window, you'll see the door, and we get an idea of what conditions are like in 1941 with the local medical officers told us. Michael Summary, his wife and eight children, whose ages range from 16 to 16 months, live in a small, dark, ill-ventilated hovel consisting of kitchen, bedroom, and a tiny loft. So two rooms and a tiny loft. There is no back door, and the place is entirely unfit for human habitation. David Ryan's wife and seven children, age ranging from 19 years to one year, even a small, dark, damp, ventilated hovel consisting of a kitchen and one bedroom. So we had 19, we had uh, seven children and a husband and wife in one bedroom. Okay? This is in a not so long ago. 
You know, the top one is the turnpike, and the bottom one is the turnpike of Lowe. Again, with the Lawrence Collection. This is a very important collection that's available at NLI, National Library of Ireland. You can actually go in and download the photographs and, and blow them up. I blew that up out of a small photograph that gives you some idea. But we're looking at the old turnpike. Here in Hermitage, Frank McInerney's wife and two young children occupy one room in a board of health cottage which has been illegally sublet to them by appointed tenants. Now, I'm playing with this thing at the moment. The Board of Health Cottage. It could well be what we call the line-in hospital. It was for uh, pregnant women. They used to go up there and uh, it was above in Hermitage. If you, if you go up towards Hermitage or Kilmelia Road, turn right, turn right to the school, Lockley School, turn left back down to town. The third house up, there was a laneway in, in uh, there that brought you into the back of, which brought me into the Lying In Hospital. From 1837 to about 1847 or thereabouts, two and a half thousand babies were born there. Of that, well, we're told one eight, so over 300 babies died above in that house or in the Lion Inn Hospital above in Hermitage, okay? There will be an article done, I did an article for, uh, uh, that will be going in a book this year as well, I'm just on that, for which, okay? David's Ryan wife and seven children raged from 19 years to one year and live in a dark, small, damp, ill vent Hands were having. <coughs> I did that, okay? Uh, you know this place, the old Bory, James is here with us, Jesse is proud to say he was born, we were in Lower Bore in Jibs. One, one room and a loft, ten of us. One room and a loft, ten of us. James Joe Sullivan, painting contractor, a good painting contractor. <laughs> 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 okay, but basically we are hearing here about Patrick Fox with his wife and family, six persons in all, who were occupying a tiny single room catch, nine foot by seven foot. Okay, there's a blow up of a hovel. One room. You have the little while looking out and you're just there. I got that again from the photograph of your man in the car, the, the car in town of one of the videos. And there's the old Boreen. I think there was a cardinal or something coming to town. Cardinal Dalton was coming through. And that was the entrance to town that he was coming down. That's why the Buntons are out. Okay, here's a picture. An Innes picture. A one bedroom unit. Uh, Semi-detached. <laughs> <laughs> two bedroom unit, two windows. Okay, catch cottage. You can imagine how easy a fire would break out there. Um, this is a general introduction now. They often say to me, the laneways, how do we get the names from? They're all over the place. They're either on the door road down now. They have been removed out of Parnell Street because they're doing work down there. But they're in Abbey Street footpath. If you walk Abbey Street footpath, on front of every lane, under the, on the footpath, you'll see the name. You have East River Lane, and you, you know, that's basically that. But the names are there. Jostle Do you know what they were for? The carriage has gone around the corner to make sure they didn't do damage to the side of the building. Uh, the last cobblestone in the Innes is on Cook's Lane. Cook's Lane, too. Um, sorry. Oh, that one now. That lane. Is Cork Alley Lane went from a cutter's courtyard over through Summerhill houses and came out onto Summerhill or out onto Vinegar Lane. Okay, Cork Alley Lane. Come out from Wailacon, who was from Quinn, uh, had a school there. So you'll see a plaque up on the side of location, location, location. Okay, read it sometime with that. That's the plaque. Better start moving. The other side of the laneways are night time. There's a beautiful view. If you go around the laneways at night time, you can come up with these beautiful reflections for cameras. Also, the activities that can go on with Irish dancing or music, they're ideal in Innes for this type of thing. So you could have the music session in the laneways. I have a script here that I'm not going to read on these ones. Okay, I need to get on to the laneways very quickly now. So I split the laneways up into five, okay? The laneways on the edge of town, Church Street, Abbey Street, Mill Street or Parnell Street, I should say High Street there as well because that could cause trouble with some people. 
at Jail Street and O'Connor Street. By the way, a high street goes from the square down as far as the pub, that the, was the airlines' pub. Okay? Parent Street goes from the rest of the way down. So it isn't all Parent Street. Okay? Jail Street, O'Connor Street, the mail and the market. I'm not getting involved in the streets now tonight. I'm just telling you what I'm, I'm, I'm the name was. So the lane was on the edge of the town where this was a new one I came up with last week. Someone said it to me, Nuns Road. They were indicating it was over near the Denbox Harbours. Uh, what's the name? Uh, what's the name? Uh, Harbour. Over in Caravan. And the yeah. Harbour. Yeah. They were indicating that was it. I don't believe it was. I think it's up to the old Ursuline convent that was over in Lifford. It had to be. Because that's where the convent was. So I think there was a road that gone up there. the Nuns Road or Nuns Lane. The Bannertown Cottages yeah. and the Maid of Aaron. That's over where the fountain is. There were six cottages over there, which I may come up here later on. Okay, I've done a bit on that on Facebook. Pound Lane, I told you early on, is below near Dan McInerney's and that. Orchard Lane is... Orchard, Orchard Lane, yeah. It's not where Orchard Lane is now. Orchard Lane went from Michael Gear and Shop up to Hamilton Hill. Okay, that was Orchard Lane. Sims Lane goes where uh, the butter market is, just up at the side of the butter market and the lane was there. Shrohan Lane was the one that confused people during the week, it, and I was surprised at the people that didn't know it. It basically went from the turnpike out onto the Kilworth Road near old Jerry McMahon's house. Do you know where that is? Uh, uh, Brandon's shop used to be out there. Okay? So, there the lane was the Randy out. There, there's actually the Bannantine Cottage. Okay, uh, Frances Bailey did that picture for me, or she did it, and I purchased the demo with the six cottages. That, that the moving statue has moved three times. It has moved from there out to the centre of the road, and it was moved up again. So we have our own moving statue in us. There's the old Lifford Mills. They're not Innes Mills, the Lifford Mills. Okay? Okay, can I, I want to make No, I want to <clears throat> Sorry about this now, technical problems that I'm not used to. I reckon I'm not into the second half. Yeah, there's the second. <coughs> Sorry, but it's commercial break. Um, can I just tell you while Eric is doing things, where do, did I get my information? Because that's what I said I'd tell you as well. That was one of the earliest things on history that was written in minutes. It's the Innes Architectural Heritage on First Purbaha. And it was printed in around the 1981. Okay, that was a great book. We all started using that when we started first. But then, there was, there's some of you know about this and some of you don't know about it. It's she, when Sheila de Valera was in the Department of Heritage, she got Innes done. And it's the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage in Innes, 1997. So every house in Innes has a number. And every house can be identified and described and when it was roughly built. And all the new housing estates and all she covered. Okay? But that's there as well. The other side I got from our good friend Sean Spellacy, uh, Innes Compendium. He goes into a lot of stuff in that, and of course the merchants of Innes, which everyone's name in Innes is mentioned. It would be wrong not to mention Jerry O'Connell again, one of the early ones, his walk and tour of Innes. Okay? Okay, I'm going back, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. Part two. Okay. The lane was of Abbey Street. Okay, you have Coach House Lane, Coast Office Lane, Change Lane, Hunts Lane, Brewer Lane, Parsons Lane. With Parsons Key down in where Brian McMahon has the solicitor's office, and we have Parsons Lane as well. With Bow Lane, McDonald's Bow, McNamara Lane, Friar Lane, Quirks Lane. Okay, that's come back to your map again, that's not a great one. Just want to show you a bit better. Um, so, with our theories, we have the Abbey Moons, the, the Friary Moons. We have the Causeway. With the old entrance or the old yard at Backer County's Hotel. That wasn't the name when you just went in there and you, you, you stored your horse. 
who I have post offices in Angels is here at the site. That was a recruiting station for for First World War, World War applicants to join the First World War. Okay, I keep going down to the coach house lane went down to the river. Post office lane ran from post office lane, post office lane ran the whole way over. Shanks lane is above where uh, Noxus is. Okay? That's Shanks lane. And then Hunts lane is not is Brewery lane. Not Brewery lane. So we have Hunts lane is the first bit gone down. I couldn't find anywhere. Maybe someone can tell me when the council at the time changed it or when the name changed. But that's basically Hunts lane. Then if I work my way back up, I McDonald's boat, that's the one where the gates are closed at night time, front and back. Okay? It's a walkway on the building. McMara's lane is Friar Lane. Okay? And above slightly further is Quinn's Lane. The back of that is still exists, but it's not it's closed up now, it's incorporated into the buildings. Okay? Of course your Varter's Rogan down to Temple Gate. Are okay, you happy with that? Okay, thank you. No, let's see where this brings me. Okay. Again, I'm back to these photographs. And I'm showing you these photographs. There's the, the, the lane where it's blown up. There's the forge that he has. There's the brewery above the end. Okay, and I don't know what that was. Okay. So we start with the post office lane. I could I, I could read the script and give you a description about it when people living in the houses, etc. We'll, we'll be here all night, so I'm going to just flip through, right? We'll do it another night, maybe on the Heritage Week or something like that. Post office lane, and raise that one, Inzos. Sorry. Back. Sorry. Inzos there. Okay? Uh, we then have Coach Office Lane. Just look at Coach Office Lane, it was there. See the boat there? And like that went straight down into the river. Now, some of you will remember the slaughterhouses down there, and they were all, what happened with the goats and everything else, they were thrown into the river. Okay. And they were thrown in over the wall, so the furnace used to plant beautifully down around there, so just. Okay, well, I just want to find our coach office lane, came down there at the back. But again, look at, like I say, how close it was. Uh, there was three houses registered in the laneway, and the people living on in them over time were Clancy's, Constant, Groves, Kilori, Handran, Howard, McMahon, O'Halloran, Reedy, and Ryle. So I have stuff written that will appear in this so called famous book when it really appears. Uh, next one. Bring back memories to you, Frank Malone's Forge. There's another video. If you go into RT Archives and call up Innes, uh, you'll see a video coming up on Frank Malone who's trying to preserve, hold on to the, his property. And. Uh, the fight goes on and over. I got some of these photographs of the video. There's Frank. Here he's using the forge in the big yard below. Okay? The Malone family, uh, I think three generations were in there. Steve, that's three generations of the family. Stephen, his son, Paco, who lived in the causeway, and his son, Frank. This is McDonald's bow. You know that bow. Um, the chemist used to be there. A shock missus. Was it at the left hand side one time? Yeah. Okay, and uh, Lin, 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 watch McCollum in Dublin is an expert on that. Um, okay, so that's the Lin one. Then we have Shanks Lin. This is Knox is there, okay? Again, Alexander's Knox, and I have a story here, but I'm, I'm watching time lapse. Tierney, Friary Bow Ma is McNamara's Lin. It's not Friary Bow, it's McNamara's Green. There's a great history attached to the Friars movement there. That's the truth. They originally started out in the Friary. He ended up in Parnell Street uh, in License Lane, and then finally, and then they went to Bow Lane, and then they finally ended up there. And the Protestant owned that house, and there was a big story how he got very upset when the Friars bought it. Okay, you've seen this painting. This is the old courthouse above at the square, where then the common monument is. There's a section of that wall still there, and there's a, an impression of this thing on the courthouse. You'll notice the two lanes there, okay? Uh, and that would be, I'd say, gone down uh, Hunt's Lane, as we established, and the other two lanes could be Parsons Lane in the back. How about here? Situated between McMahon's Lane and the square. I was just giving an idea who was in that lane. There's people living in all these lanes, okay? So this comes up every now and again in a row as well. Hunt's Lane is at the top. Park Row, I actually, Oliver told me that one time, Park Row is halfway down, or the, I didn't know where Park Row was, but Park Row is halfway down, and then you go into Brewery Lane. Okay? 
this thing is okay. So then that's back to the photograph I showed you early on with Bruno Lane. Okay, this man I'm enthralled by is Michael G. Constant. He lived in Bruno Lane. He's buried below in the Friary. That's his gravestone inside in the wrong place. It was moved in order to give you access out there and get the view right. Michael J. Constein uh, is responsible for the, the Daniel O'Connor Monument and the Manchester Martyrs Monument. He collected the money. He went all over the world and collected the money. His name is mentioned on the monument. But the unusual thing, he died in poverty in Brewery Lane, sadly. sadly. And amazingly enough, the people of Venice felt so much about him that they put him into the Friary. Okay? Michael Constein was kissed on the cheek by Daniel O'Connor. And he never washed his face after that. <laughs> And that's why he had the title, Sticky or Dirty Mickey. Uh, <laughs> there's a picture of him with his hat and there's his coat. He got it from Daniel McConnell's coat. So that's the story of, I, I wrote an article about him in the chat one way back. Okay, Parsons Lane is the one that caused a bit of confusion to Facebook people during the week. Parsons Lane is uh, in there at the back of, uh, there's the poem, Parsons, there it is there. Okay, if you, if you go down to the bookshop there in the car park, what do you call it, the, the new bookshop? Yeah, there's a garage door across the road. That will join the back of that lane. So if you go back to the old picture over here, you'll see there was a, the front of the lane was there, and it went through in underneath, okay? Bull Lane is above where uh, the bank, um, bank places are, across the road of bank places, your yeah, bank place, okay. Bowley was where the gentry and the solicitors and everyone lived while the court was in session. Also, the friars moved there before they moved down to the friary. They had their, their premises there. Remember, the Carol built the bridge across and the roadway across to bring over to Bindon Street, okay? There's Bowley again, because I have a lot of history on Bowley and what was on and what didn't go on. Okay, this lane, Bindon Lane. Uh, this is one of the few private lanes in town. That's why nobody gets parking tickets there. I shouldn't be telling you that. <laughs> and that's thanks to Oliver's brother, yeah. believe it or not. Because the Clare Chapman on the 21st of September 1946 tells us that, Mr. sorry, F. F. Conan's solicitors writing on behalf of Dr. Patrick Milan, President of Bindon Street, explained that the honorized use of the lane well. And our good friend, I'd say it was Joe, was it Joe Bullen wrote back and said, sorry, we don't want to hear about it, it's a private lane. So you can't get a patent to get in that lane. Okay? Old Friary Lane, that's straight down from Bow Lane. Okay? Okay, that was very quick. Now we go to O'Connor Street. The laneways in O'Connor Street are Thompson's Lane, and I call it Maria Bonds, Bowlen's Lane, Quinn's Bow, Skin God Lane. Okay. A lot of people didn't count that during the week, and I told them about it previously on one Sunday. Cook's Lane, Rock Lane, and Westby's Lane. Okay, first one's Arthur's Row. You could talk tonight about Arthur's Row. Basically, the convent is in here. Um, the old, I have other pictures here. Daniel O'Connell's uh, nephew uh, stayed with a relative, Charles O'Connell, a solicitor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to move fast on this one. Uh, yeah, but Arthur's Row was where the industrial school was as well, or the laundry was at the left hand side. I go switch here, yeah, here's a better picture of it. Okay, there's the old laundry. Okay, the, the entrance to the convent is here. Um, that's an old picture now that shows up uh, the thing there. The first, one of the clubs in Innes is here. I, uh, Oliver wrote an article, I have expended and was given to Oliver. But you did a good of it for me about the clubs of Innes, uh, which are a history in themselves. But the, uh, the Foresters Club, I think, is here. Am I right? The Alphans. Thank you. I guess I know it. The Alphans Club is here, and they used to have a window upstairs that they'd be able to look out and see when the guard used to arrive. Now, just a quick thing on the clubs. The idea of the clubs was people worked until 6 30 or whatever it was on a Saturday evening, they'd know where to go. So the pubs were closed on Sunday, so they had to go somewhere. So the pubs were gentlemen's clubs. And we have it, we have a lot of them. And I have a small bit done on that thanks to Oliver. I worked off Oliver's presentation on it. Um, 
what we say, the type of people that lived in the day where were attorneys, carpenters, physicians, physicians, tailors, clergymen. They were basically that lane fed into the courthouse as well. So it was a mock market lane. This man, uh, he's uh, at 14, went to the monastery of uh, Mount St. Bernard in the Alps. Then he went into the Irish College in Rome. He's the first Catholic priest commission, uh, commissioned to serve in the British Army. He's uh, Thomas McMahon. That's his tomb. He's buried out there in Carlborn. So the Maloney, there's a way of spelling that, Maloney, M-O-L-O-N-Y. People are particular about that as well. Okay, but that's him, a uh, small man to serve by him. Then John, that's where the Ulster Bank is currently. As you go down the lane, to the convent lane again. It's John O'Brien's tenements. Uh, and it's also, it was also the, the laundry. Okay, there's where the convent started out, the old house inside. Then the convent there, and it expanded into this. Okay, so in 1854, it looked like that when it started. Uh, where am I here now? Oh yeah, Tom, 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 Thompson's Lane or uh, Maria Bond's Lane. And I saw something today, or I learned something today about that again that I didn't know before. Uh, did any of you come across Martin Power's Walk and Tour of Venice? Well, Martin Power was, uh, did a Walk and Tour of Venice, I'd say about 40 or 50 years ago. And there's a tape floating around of it, but I started playing this evening, and I leave it late. But I started playing this evening and he goes on for about an hour bringing ladies around. And why was he able to get away with more than the way he was give out to the ladies? Going around. Okay, um, just look at that one. Nice was saying. Okay, he has another name for that one. Oh, yeah. The boogeyman name. Yeah. Okay, it just frightened the, the devil out of young lads because they used to have to run from one side of the lane up there by the side of Supermax up to the other side. No lights, no nothing. So at night time, of course, the, the mind played tricks on them and they called it the Boogeyman Lane. That was a new name I located to the Maria Ball Lane came from another very good historian in Innes that passed away, Sister Pice, below the convent. I, she had a map in her book and she had identified Thompson's Lane as Maria Ball's Lane. Okay. We can only presume Maria Bond was a woman of the night. Okay? Uh, Bowling's Lane is closed up. When Oliver restructured, is it part of yours now, Oliver? It is. When Oliver restructured O'Connor Street, 8, 10, and, or 6, 8, and 10 O'Connor Street, Bowling's Lane existed there, okay, across from Thompson's Lane. So you can see there are men standing in it, seen standing in it. There's Thompson's Lane over there, so Bowling's Lane is there, it's now closed up, but there's a gate at the back of it leading in from Temple Gate. And that photograph went up last night, testing a few people, and a few people know it. Okay, Queen's Bow. Um, you, you could talk all night about a lot of these, and like I said, Queen's Bow is, Brogan's now has taken over Queen's Bow by putting Brogan's up there, which I think is slightly illegal. You know, they shouldn't be doing things like that, but that's not my baby to rectify. Um, uh, what did I say in here? I'm going to go a bit further. The Clare Journal, which was the forerunner to the Clare Champion, was printed here inside this lane. Uh, what's your name? Um, He's Linda Riggs family lived in that lane as well. When they had a problem outside in Ashline, the house, and there was little difficulties out there, they couldn't get their own house back. They wanted a house in Bindle Street. So they did, and they couldn't get the bank manager out. So they first they moved into the Queen's Hotel, but they eventually had to find a place. So they moved into a house in that lane where she gave me some lovely photographs of them playing in that lane. Okay. There's the lane where, uh, last Sunday. Um, so this, this thing anyway is the Freemasons Lodge, Lodge 60. These were the Freemasons, they used meeting there in that building. And he was marched from there up to the, the theatre up in Cook's Lane. Okay? With the Freemasons Lodge, there's Sean Spellacy has written uh, uh, the history of it completely of the Freemasons Lodge in that one. So he's the whole history of the Freemasons in that one. Okay, so I'm not going to get into it. Um, Scanlon's, I think, was a cake shop there before Brogan's and stuff like that. This is Skin Goat Lane. Constance, correct, sorry. Point of order. <laughs> okay, so
skin working was roughly down where what you uh, know where uh, uh, Frank Malone's butcher shop was. It went from there in as far as license lane. It was a link up through into license lane at the back. Now, I'm told there was people in this one time called Skin the Gut, and that was their nickname. Okay, that appeared as well. So there's a story behind that as well. But that's Skin Gut Lane. Uh, what am I saying here? Cook's Lane, you all know it. Well, some of you know it as Hinchy Lane, some of you know it as Heaslip's Lane, some of you know it as Brogan's Lane. So you will, and but that's Skin or uh, Cook's Lane. Now, there's a big history attached to Mary Kelly, of course, that we're wrong to leave out Mary Kelly. Um, I have. That uh, Sean and Francis Heaslip here. Sean, give me that photograph. <laughs> have I stretched Sean slightly? <laughs> okay. I think, I think unless I'm corrected, that's the old theatre. Okay. That was in Innes. So we had, um, this was our Cook's Lane was originally known as Bridewell. Bridewell. So way back in 1800s, it, uh, it was a Bridewell, a holding place for you know, people when they wanted to arrest them. So it was known as Bridewell Lane, and it didn't turn into Cook's Lane. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I think it was and, and it was a factory as well. Factory Somebody well. came in on that today and said they named the factory that was in there. Some of us went to school in there. Yeah. When I was the Okay. Um, this is a uh, thanks to our friend again with the famous photograph. Look at the view he gave us. He gave us the old industrial school, he gave us the old convent, he gave us the friary from the sky. So this can be blown up, like I say, and we are playing around with it. It was not an orphanage. This thing was not an orphanage. It was an industrial school. The industrial school operated between 1880 until 1911. It catered for about 400 girls. Okay, the, the school was under the Sisters of Mercy and Circle by the State. Okay, um, I'm not going to get bogged down that. Jane is there, and I have to advertise Jane's walking tour. But Jane has done massive work on the industrial school. She gave a talk here about 18 months ago, two years ago, Jane, yeah. on the industrial school. She checked all the records. She went to Dublin, and she got access, thanks to the Sisters of Mercy, who opened up their records to her and gave her access to the records inside the industrial school. Wasn't it a fine building? That, if it went into, into the back of Cook's Lane, it was inside at the back of Cook's Lane. Okay? Rock Lane, thanks to the Heathcliff who came up with this, they told me the lane way coming out of the back of the cinema, out onto Cook's Lane was known as Rock Lane. I never heard about it, but they came Rock Lane, okay? Uh, you could, uh, that's his there. Okay, uh, Westby's Lane is there at the side of uh, Old Tom Manions or Sad Burks or, or the pub there. Okay, Westby's Lane. They just go up and turn in at the back of the car park. Okay, again, each lane has a story attached to it. People lived in the lane, houses were in the lane, so there's a story from families from Innes. They were, went to Hermitage, or went to Conley Villas, or went to the Turnpike. Chances are, there's a fair chance you came from the lane with the Innes. Uh, that's that one. That's that one. Have I another one? I have another one. Another one. Oh, oh, that's number one. I'm conscious it's 9 o'clock, I didn't start until 10 past. Quarter past. Quarter past. Oh yeah, give me 15 minutes. I'm actually doing very well now. I'll be going through, I think, 160 slides. Is it? Eric, roughly. 129. 129 slides. I'm going through them fairly fast now. I could go a lot slower and, and, and go into a lot more information. Where is this going to bring me? <coughs> Park Street, as we call it. Okay. Name is Parnell Street, High Street, Old Mill Street. Okay. Here's some of them. Salt House Lane, Cross Lane, White Lane or Barrett's Lane, Griffey's Lane, Brady's Lane, Halloran's Lane, Inwright's Bow, King's Bow, River Lane, Wood Quay, Thompson's Lane, Lysis Lane, Murray's Lane, Chapel Lane, Merchant Square, Curtin's Lane, Average Lane, Fahey's Lane, Howley's Lane, and McMahon's Lane. Now again, I'm putting this photograph up to show you the trouble. Look at how close the houses were, and how they came down to the, the what you call That's Inright Lane. There was a big building inside there. There was a dance school one time. Somebody here remember it? The school of dancing. 
okay? Okay, this might help us a small bit. Okay, so we came down from Rory Lane, <coughs> the square above here, so we come down here, Salt House Lane was there. So what happened was the bacon used to be brought down there, it would be salted, brought in the boats, down the Star Star Castle, and let off farm. That's how the name got Salt House Lane. Cross Lane is Cross Lane. It's linking Salt House Lane and White Lane. Okay, White Lane, I think, unless I'm mistaken, is that Fafo Council Lane? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have Griffiths Lane, not down near Genghis. Griffiths Lane is there, okay. Cortins Lane is next door to it. On O'Halloran's Lane, Kings Bow and River Lane. They actually appear if you blow up the Lawrence Collection as well. River Lane, it comes out uh, at the side of Inzus. Okay, so that brings you down to the end of the old town, remember? 1600? Mm -hmm. So the sign is down there and King's Bow alongside it. At the other side then we had Lysett's Lane. This causes the utter confusion. Lysett's Lane and Murray's Lane. Okay? Turns into another lane down there which you all know and I'll explain to you the name which a lot of people get wrong. Chapel Lane and Blood Lane off it. Curtin's Lane and Cavey's Lane. And then somewhere in Vinegar Lane. Okay. What am I showing here? I'm just, I'm just showing you that I've blown up again. There's Inwright's, the big building that's just been inside in Inwright's Yard. Inwright's Yard was a supermarket, literally, I'm told, by listening to your man today. Everything and anything was in there, but that was the old dancing school, so it was. You can see here, uh, I think Patty Ellie's one of those. Uh, Lysett's Lane, looking down from Parnell Street, or looking out onto Parnell Street. Okay, Lysett's Lane was where the friars, when they were left the uh, uh, friary below in Abbey Street, they came up here and set up a house up there, okay? I'll give a small bit of history about it, 12 foot. The beauty of Lysus Lane is it's one of the few lanes that has a channel still left. If you just go into Lysus Lane, the old channel, look down, look up when you're going into these laneways, but there's a small channel at the side of it that exists back along by. I think, unless I'm mistaken, the cobble or the what you call has gone there. Okay, this is where the friars were. That plaque is up on Lysus Lane at the side of Monaghan's Bay, or not, uh, Mud Queen's Bakery that was. Okay? So the history of the friars there is there. This photograph appeared in, uh, uh, what's your name, Dorothy Lang's photograph. She implied that it was taken across from the Queen's Hut, or the Old Ground Hotel. But I think a couple of us don't agree with that. We think it's here in Lysus Lane, or looking up Lysus Lane from the market. She's a young girl, okay, but he, and just if you're in Dublin at the moment, in Collins' Barracks, there's a, an exhibition of her photographs until mid April, Dorothy Lane. Okay, she came to Innes and she took photographs and why it's happened. What's here? Salt House Lane, I told you about what happens. There's an old picture of Salt House Lane. There's Salt House Lane today. Lane. Right here, Cross Lane. Cross Lane, that's the only thing I could come up with. Cross Lane, Cross Lane, like I say, linked. The, the two lanes, White's Lane and South House Lane. Okay, you've seen this photograph before, Dan McInerney, again taken from Dorothy Lang's photograph. I think someone actually named that woman today or yesterday, the woman in the shawl. Okay, they used to make uh, everything and anything could be got here. Okay, Merchant Square is now what it is, brings you in the back of it. Okay, now here we're back to. In Wright's Bow, which is O'Connor's lane, the chief called it, and you call it that uh, Cabey's lane, okay, and like I saw you, the other one was Fatty's lane, and across the road was River's lane. River, River lane. Means an old photograph. Okay, Merchant Square, look up. How many of you ever looked up in Merchant Square and saw the artwork above underneath? Okay, that's why I say look up, look down, look over, and look back, and you'll see, you'll be surprised what you see when you walk these lanes. <laughs> So I give that here on, so I won't do that again. Chapel Lane, you could give a whole talk on Chapel Lane. I think we could talk about Crowbeans, we could talk about, uh, you know, the people here, you'll see some of them here, and the church, I told you, it's a barn church. Uh, I could talk about the church, but I haven't time. Diver Max was there, and there was a, a, a shoe factory alongside Diver Max. 
So it was manufacturing shoes. Um, okay, there's the Baron Church again. Sorry, I just the best way to finish this one. Chaplain, you're a diver. There's Diver Mac, he taken from the video. Uh, Josie, Cronin, and the two ladies. Bridie, Chrissy Butler, is it? Chrissy yeah. Butler and Bridie Quigley. And Bridie Quigley. Okay, and Lizzie Cusick. The two girls that you speak in your chips and all that. But you could talk, like I say, I could really give a talk on Chapel Lane, no problem. Okay, there's Chapel Lane. There's the famous £170,000 uh, gable. <coughs> okay? So we got our Jack Bean chimney back. That's one of the three chimneys in town. This is a timber frame house. Jane, if you do one of Jane's talks, I'm sure she'll fill you in on this. I could talk a small bit about it, but I'll leave it to Jane. McFarren's or Polly, who used to be known, people used to call it Polly's. I think. You get anything from a, a nail to a uh, you get anything in polys. Okay? That's McFarland's, but again, like I said, it's polys. I forgot to mention this poor girl, uh, Harriet Smithson Berlus. She was in the, the theatre in Cook's Lane. She was a famous actress, Dean Barrett, who was the, the Dean of Innes at the time. If you go into the cathedral and you're looking up towards the altar, at the right hand side is a plaque called Dean Barrett's or the memorial to Dean Barrett. He took in this girl as a young girl and he reared her for three or four years while her parents were on the road with the, the, the operas. Okay? She went off and became a famous opera singer, went to London and then went on to France and she's buried in France. And again, there's, there was talks of a film on this girl. Uh, Dean Barrett is buried above in the old church above Drum Cliff, the, the, the box tomb at the end of the church above Drum Cliff. Okay, but he took that girl in, there's a full story about her. Okay, um, Blood Lane, Josie Cronin's is down there somewhere, right? You come up a small bit and you see the little lane map. You passed it several times, they just go in at the back of Dan McInerney's. It's still there, you see the trace over there as you go up Chapel Lane. That's blood lane, interest of blood lane. Barrett's white lane, there's nothing extraordinary about this on my tour. It's a 10 foot wide with low lying and liable to floods. Located in Parnell Street, Fockfuss, at the side of Fockfuss. In 1911, the census recorded a Mahoney family living in the lane only. Okay, um, sorry, Brady's lane. Brady's lane is one of the last lanes that really give you the impression of Innes with regard to lanes. Again, Jane ends up there talking. Uh, she brings it down there. I've seen her a couple of times. <laughs> but there's a delay the from the back. And that's basically, you'd hate to get that into this, this repair. But that's what gives you one of the true feelings. And the house it's in, I'd say, I'd love to get a DNA, not DNA, a carbon dating done on some of the roof timbers because that house could tell a tale as well. So Brady's lane, that little lane where we had. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight families living in that lane. Now remember that lane went down to the river, further than it is now. Your second, as I told you earlier on, your second and third class houses, rooms, rooms, I think is there. The bulk of them were one, two rooms, and the last two had one room. The house consisted of one room. Okay. <coughs> this is the census then, a typical census uh, form, again for Brady's Lane. In one of the houses you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Okay? Uh, married eight, uh, yeah, okay, I'll get that, okay. But basically that family lived in there, it's the Hillary family. Uh, do you remember uh, uh, Pat Daly's and Daly's uh, toy shop, the lane next door to it, that's it, gone into the cinema, Curtin's Lane now. Again, Cabe's Lane. Cabies Lane, hey, it goes into, if you Google Cabies Lane, there's a, a street seller in New York at 2 o'clock in the morning who was selling papers and he reminisced on Cabies Lane, but in particular a woman. And do I have it here? Some houses require a page of document. I'll keep going on a minute now. Becky, sorry, I'll do in rights board. That's I told you in rights board. Um, that's in rights lane, or uh, Connors' is lane, as you call it. Okay. Um, oh, Helen's name. Do I do that one? Here it is. The newspaper seller at two o'clock in the morning, on a winter's morning in Times Square. He goes on with this poem. 
and how is Cavies Lane? I'm 40 years left, sir, and never like to see the place again. It was out of there I married her, the first one, met Toomey's daughter. The bit of paint they called her. She was young, tall, and a, a birch, uh, tall as a birch tree. Pale and with blushes in her cheeks, and eyes as brown as burning water. And Cavies Lane, I was happy there, in Innes Town and clear, when I was young, a uh, year young, no, not old. But the poem goes on to various verses, and it's available on the internet. But he was a, a newspaper seller in New York, Times Square. Cavies Lane, Eddie, I apologise, I saw your logo up here, I stole oh, your photograph. That's all right, so, so uh, Eddie can spot all these photographs that have been stolen with that logo, by the way. <laughs> Okay, but these are two houses. Thank God Eddie got a photograph of them. Lolly, Lolly Culligan, was it? That was in one of these. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. That one, and I'm saying it very, very The house on the left, I think, was Cullen's and Mousy and Lolly's. Also, a man called Lightning John, who used to drive a horse and cart for Kelly's Court. The stories that are coming out, that's one thing I'm appealing to you for. If you have stories about the land west, I'd love them, because I want to include it. It's all right giving facts and figures and who's in this lane and in that lane, well, like I did in honestly. But a lot of the books that we printed later on uh, softened, softened a bit and told us a bit of story. So if you have any stories, I'd appreciate it. Okay, this is Fahey's Lane. This lane joins Parnell Street, Summer Hill, and many towns call it Genghis Lane. River Lane, this joins Parnell Street, that's, uh, no, is that, that's River Lane, yeah, that's across the road, River Lane. <coughs> Now this was a, a postcard that appeared, or the picture appeared in the famine in, in the 19th of January 19, 1850. A uh, sketch from the Illustrated London News. This is a, a mother looking at her child in a, a hovel in Fahey's Quay, which is, ch the chances are it's River Lane, because Fahey's Quay, Fahey's Lane, I would say, ran into Fahey's Quay, if I was guessing. So River Lane. So this was a photograph. Now that's the, the picture that we, Claire Roots, put on the gravestone that we erected above at the top, very top of Drumcliff, in memory of the, those who lost their lives in the famine. So it is. Okay. Parsons Key and Wood Key. Yeah, there's some confusion of this. Brian McMahon's offices are in Parsons Key and Paddy Brown's offices are in Wood Key. So I can't argue. All these lane, you know. Uh, the Pat Man and John Shaw live there. Okay, very nice. The Market Lane, if we run down to the last one, the Market Lane, we have Vinegar Lane, which is Summer Hill, Cavies Lane, which is got down by the uh, Paddy Kendys, Armstrong's Lane is around the centre, Curtin's Lane goes down by the cinema. Okay? Armstrong's Lane is around the centre. That's the shambles. The Clare Champion used to hold their paper down there and you just roll it up at night time or roll it up for the paper on Thursday, he used to use it as a store. The band used to be upstairs in that, and uh, 1901, I think that dates back to when you blow, when you blow up the, the photographs again, you can read all that. Curtin's Lane was the one back down to the cinema, but again, this little house took my thing, disappeared on Innocent Old Picks as well, but I was really after that house, which I blew up here. You see, the same tradition that was there in the other lane seemed to have appeared. So the same architect seems to have been using this detail around the place with regard to a shop front, I would say. You buy black puddings and white puddings in there. In that place. That's what I thought it would be a shop. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Eddie. Okay, Vinegar Lane, then, like I said, is Summer Hill. Um, it's funny, I have... Mr. John Ryan, the, the bedrooms were small and lightning was defective. The house had two bedrooms, a kitchen. His family had lived in the house for 70 years. It's funny, the Ryans then ended up in somewhere, not those Ryans. They are from out of town. So they are guard Ryan, I think he was a guard. Car Kelly Lane, this is McCullough's coal yard to the left. Sorry. Um, this thing is a bit sentimental. We have McCullough's coal yard to the left and the tire place on the right. The last uh, cobbles were destroyed recently when the Irish water came to town and uh, went wild and I made a couple of phone calls but I got nowhere quietly, but uh, I got nowhere so the cobbles were destroyed literally, the last cobbles in Ennis. There is one thing left on this lane, Cork Alley Lane, and I don't know how many of you have seen it. There's a hole fest here right in the corner. It's a metal hole fest sticking up out of the ground. 
and seemingly there was uh, an undertaker that lived here and that worked here and he used to have his horse and the whole and he'd tie the horse's reins onto the whole fest. Okay, but that whole fest is still there. It's the only thing we've left on that Cork Alley Lane. I said that early on, that's Cork Alley Lane going out. Scabby Lane. It just causes trouble as well. Scabby Lane is the one from the, from, I should get this right, the male, John Maroney is down there. From the male, not the market, the lower section of the market going from Tommy Brennan's old butcher shop down to the junction of O'Connor Street is known as the Mel, the official name. The rest of it is the upper market and the lower market. But from the Mel, if you go up the side of Queen's Lane, that's Scabby Lane. Now, people will argue with me. I can only look at what's in front of me. It's on a map, Scabby Lane. Okay, so we'll have to take it as a Scabby Lane. And it turns back in at the back of Queen's. Okay, so you go from Scabby Lane to Lysus Lane on the right hand side and to Murray's Lane on the left hand side and you get out to Parnell Street. I think I've finished. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, just I forgot to mention Maura, our famous singer in uh, Garan Nikila. This is Sims Lane, is uh, Michael Gaines, the stone outside Dan Murphy's door. Some of you know the stone is long gone, as your man told us in the film. But there's a picture up here and a still up there showing the dancing and the stone that used to be outside old Dan, Mar Dan Murphy's door. Johnny Patterson lived in this lane where, and he was a circus performer. He died below in Kerry somewhere on an act performance. But uh, that lane where up there is Sims Lane and it goes right up onto Drumwiddle Road. Again, the names are there, the records. Mm. Yeah. Oh, did I do? Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, as you can see. <laughs> as, you, as you can see, every lane has a story. Every house has a story. And you can actually minutely go into every lane and every house and get the details of it. That's why, okay, what we'll be doing on the fair routes, we'll be giving you the... The 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 the, the, gun, the the three routes that will give you the information with regard to the, the laneways of Innes. But it will be up to individuals to do their family history and to expand it into their own history. But why is there some history in those laneways? You can see it. And I haven't gone into it at all after an hour. Thank you. <laughs> I pray this now. Is there questions that anyone wants to ask? Are you all happy? Yes. Larry, when was that Enright's oh. music hall demolished? Uh, I'd say when they cleared the lane is. Joe, to be honest with you, we have to acknowledge the work of Joe Boland. I, I always acknowledge it every now and again. But Joe Boland cleared the slums of Innes. And he, he started off building houses in Clockley, Drumbiggle, uh, Clancy Park, the whole lot. And he had a housing program going that all governments should learn from. Literally, he had, at any one time, he had up on 100 houses going in us. So yeah. But if I was guessing, it was around 68, 69 that they cleared the lane was. Detail, small detail. Okay, but the 60s, yeah, 60s, 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 yeah. yeah, it was mid 60s, so we'll go mid 60s, 65. But both Abbey Street and uh, Manor Street lane was cleared. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Oliver. Sorry, Oliver. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry, Bishop. Sorry, you just mentioned there MacParlin's. You know, MacParlin's shop was one of the most important shops in the town of Ennis during the Second World War. And every Tuesday, there would be a queue for MacParlin's up Chapel Lane, right up the market. And the reason for it was that the woodbines used to come in every Tuesday. And the only shop in Ennis where you could get the woodbines was MacParlin's. Now I <coughs> played a little part in all this because uh, we, had, uh, we had 10 people working for us in our shop all during the war years and they all smoked woodbines. But they couldn't queue uh, uh, up 
waiting for the woodbine. So I used to get the job every Tuesday of going in the queue and they used to give me kind of sixpence for myself. <laughs> but the interesting thing about it was that when I got back to the shop where all the woodbines, there was a big scissors in the shop and they used to cut them in two so they'd get two spokes out of one. <laughs> the other thing I was going to mention, to mention that Dr. M Dr. McCarthy, you know, he's the county MOH, and he, his job was going around condemning all the different houses and stuff like that. But I thought I might tell you a little story about him. <coughs> uh, my father took him down to Clark Castle. My father was a dispensary doctor in Clark Castle uh, to do uh, condemning the houses. So he brought him to this house for a man who was mad on greyhounds. And he, he examined the house anyway, and he couldn't find, find it a toilet. So he kind of went down the garden, and he was looking around, you see, and he, he thought there might be kind of a shed or something in the, at the end of the garden. And he couldn't see any shed. So uh, he said to the, fellow, the man, by the way, you, you, have no, um, you have no toilet down here, and uh, what do you do? Do you, do you dig a hole? I don't know, what's the fella? Do you, is it a cat you think I am? <laughs> Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> Any other questions for Larry? We'll finish anyway. Thank you very much for coming. We have two, two, uh, two more talks there. Um, our next talk is on the 19th of March. We have Timothy Maher, Professor Timothy Maher. He's an Irish American lecturer from the Catholic University of America. He's retired now, but he's over at UCD for the year under a Fulbright scholarship. And he's going to talk. It's going to be a discussion style talk. Um, so there'll be audience participation. Um, how your family fits in, family history, and the broader narratives of Irish and Irish American history. So um, it'll be a discussion talk where the audience can participate with some of their own research. Um, Timothy has written a couple of books there that have won prizes, and uh, he's very well known. And our last meeting will be not the third Thursday, but the fourth Thursday in April, the 23rd of April. And this will be um, given by Dr. Ghislaine Dereg, who Larry had spoken about. Um, she will be talking about the notable no-nos of Ennis. Um, so that is on the fourth Thursday, it's the 23rd of April here, um, and the March is the 19th of March. So two more talks, and thank you very much for coming home. Oh, we do have a school reunion, a of school reunion, a launch of a book, um, if you're interested, drum ban of school, remember. 22nd of March here at 7 o'clock. Anyway, we'll see you hopefully the 19th of March. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much.